restoring jealousy windows on a vintage trillium. This was a, this is a big project because I'm still working on it. But one of the things that I think would be most helpful to somebody who is embarking on such a project is to know what tools are best for cleaning these up and restoring them back to where they should be. So there's other videos on YouTube that talk about jealousy windows. Um, some of them I found to be maybe too long, some are just way too short. And what I was really looking for is somebody just telling me, you know, what tools do I need? And um, so that's what I'm gonna do. And as I tell you about the tools that I used to clean up these windows, um, I'll show you some footage of, of us actually cleaning the windows. So here is a window before. Um, this is my next window I'm gonna be working on. And as you can see, the seals are very dry. Um, this is from a 1979 uh, Trillium Camper. And so all these seals are gonna be replaced just like I did in that, that little window I showed you. And of course, all of the metal is gonna be cleaned up as well. Um, there's a few that I did over there behind me. So let me just talk about some of the tools that I recommend that you have. The first thing I'm going to recommend is that you get yourself a little magnetic tray like this um, because you're going to be taking out lots of little screws and it's nice to have some place where you can lay those. Um, you can get replacements, which I did on a few screws, but if you don't have to, why bother? And it's kind of nice to have that peace of mind. All right. So you're also going to need um, a screwdriver, of course, to take out the screws on these windows, but you're going to find that some of the screws um, are rusted in. In fact, that's what I found on a number of the screws on these windows, and I, I thought, uh, you know, how am I ever going to get these screws out? I tried soaking it in WD-40, um, spraying that, letting it sit overnight, and then I um, talked to somebody at VintageTrailerGaskets.com, great place to work with, by the way, you're going to need to get new seals and um, you know, for the windows and such. Anyway, he recommended that I use a hammer drill or an impact driver, and that's what this is. It doesn't have a battery in it. And I just lightly tapped, I mean, just lightly, just barely pulled the trigger. You know, I just set it inside the screw and then just a little pop like that. And it was all it took to loosen up the screws, at least on the window frames that, um, the windows that I'm working with, all right? So those are two types of um, screwdrivers. Impact driver, um, a regular screwdriver is gonna help you out a lot. Now, once you've got all the pieces disassembled, you've got the window all taken apart, um, what I prefer to use to clean off the aluminum is these, um, the brand name would be Scotch-Brite, but these are just generic from my local grocery store. Just a real, like abrasive, um, pad for cleaning pots and pans and what I did is I have cut them into little pieces and so I cut each one of these into four and I found that um, this size was perfect for scraping and sanding or scrubbing the, the sides of the window all right so soak it in WD-40 spray it very liberally and then use these scouring pads or scotch bright um, now, when I was doing that, the first window I didn't think of this, but then I realized it would be really nice to have some gloves. So I wear these when I am scrubbing with the WD-40. I mean, you can wash up with soap, but it's nice just to take off these gloves because it does get pretty filthy. And um, I just discovered, and I found out through the process of doing three windows now, that this is definitely the way to go. I really like having those gloves on when I work with the WD-40 and the scouring pads. Okay, so now you've got the window dis disassembled, you've, you've soaked it in WD-40, you have scoured it, and uh, you're going to run into places that need scraping. So I, I have an assortment of scraping tools. These are just like some paint scrapers. Um, this one is a little bit thicker, a little bit sharper at the end than the, this, this other one. Um, I also have a five-in-one painter's tool that I found to be pretty useful, especially that tip was really nice to use. And what I would do with those tips and those edges is that there is a lot of um, fine grooves on these, at least my windows. I don't know what yours are gonna look like. And so I would use this just to scrape um, 
the grooves on that window. Now, I also grabbed a few smaller tools. Um, this is from a nail care kit, you know, for like your fingernails and toenails. Um, I found that was pretty nice too for scraping out some of these areas, some of these places where they had that glue or just gunk um, built up over the last 40 plus years. And I also used a little awl. Um, I just happened to have a, a leather kit where this all was on the inside, and this was one of my favorite tools to use. This was great for cleaning, of course, those areas, but also when you begin to take out these seals um, in various places on the windows, um, this was great to clean out the area where the seal rests, all right? So I have an assortment of scraping tools. Um, I didn't go out and buy anything. These were, these were things I had around the house. And I think you can probably do the same thing. Um, I don't need. I don't think you need to go find anything specialty. Just find anything with a nice, nice edge on it that you can use to scrape, uh, scrape the window frames. All right. You're also going to need a couple pairs of pliers. Now I have a few different, a couple different types. And again, it's just because I had them. Um, sometimes this was nicer to use. Sometimes this was better to use. Now what I would do with these is to, I would pull out the. Um, I can't think of the name. I know it's it's a seal. What the right word is, I'll put it on the screen. Um, but I would use that to pull those different seals. Glazing. That's the word I'm looking for. I would peel out. I would pull out the glazing. Now you're going to find that when it comes to pulling out the glazing and pulling out the various seals on these windows, um, they are not going to want to give. Okay, they're going to be very stubborn. And um, so I'm going to recommend another tool that you use to remove these different um, seals. Hold on a second. I just want to open up this window. All right. So I'm talking about this, these seals right here. What they did is they, at the factory, they kind of hammered right here um, with maybe a screwdriver or a special tool to crimp that spot so that the seal wouldn't fall out. All right, good idea for them, but then 45 years or whatever it is later, when you want to go take that seal out, it's pretty difficult when they've crimped that. So, um, again, this was a tip I got from Vintage Trailer Gaskets. Um, I've got a rotary tool. Um, you might have like a Dremel tool. Um, this is a Ryobi um, rotary tool of some sort. And this is the blade, or not the blade, but the the attachment that I used. Um, it's sort of a sanding disc and I just rested that sanding disc on the inside of that groove where the crimp was and that released, um, that enabled the, um, the seal to be released. Now, I did not know that until my third window. So my first two windows, um, I used tools like this and I kind of hammered away at it, but um, I feel like I kind of damaged the groove. And in fact, this window over here, what I ended up doing is I had damaged it so much I couldn't put the uh, seal back in, and so I just ended up putting some um, caulking right there. Okay, but I wished I wouldn't have had to do that. Um, I would have preferred knowing what I know now and using this Dremel tool. Man, I can't believe it. You know, I spent literally half a day trying to undo that crimp with a screwdriver and with these different pry bars and scrapers. And this took like two minutes, all right? Super slick, so I highly recommend. If you don't have a tool like this, I would recommend going out and buying a tool like that because that really made the job super easy where now I don't dread the last, I mean, I do dread the last two windows. I had two more to go, they're sitting over there. I don't dread them nearly as much, all right? So there's that, and um, so you've got all the seals out now, right? You've scraped it clean, you've, you've got it pretty shiny. You're going to be surprised by how shiny, how shiny you can get using the WD-40 and the Scotch-Brite style pads. But then you're going to need to probably attack it with some steel wool. And when you use steel wool, I'm going to recommend using some sort of thicker glove. Um, don't bother with these gloves. Um, your steel wool is going to tear right through them. Um, Okay, because I tried, I know. Um, so you're gonna wanna use a thicker glove. This is like a gardening glove. Um, again, these were in our garage. We already had them. Um, I've settled on number one as really the only level of steel wool 
that I recommend. Um, I started off with different levels. In fact, I saw somebody do three different levels of steel wool, and I just wasn't seeing any change from from like double zero, you know, from two to one to double zero, triple zero, uh, four zeros. Um, anyway, came down to just using level one and that's all I'm going to use in my last two windows. So I'm just going to give it a good buffing with this, wearing my gloves, all right? And then after you've done that, and be careful, um, I've, I've had like three steel wool slivers with this, and I think it was when I wasn't wearing my gloves, um, but wear shoes. I ended up with a sliver in my foot because I was scrubbing the window with steel wool barefoot. And so, and I had two uh, steel wool slivers in my fingers. So wear shoes, wear gloves, and you know, clean everything off when you're done. So I've got a brush. Um, you can use probably any kind of brush that you might have. Um, this is just a, um, you know, nylon bristles. And I just uh, polished off, not polished off, but I just kind of brushed off all of that steel, all those steel wool particles that were left over. Vacuum everything up. So now you've got a clean window. Um, and at some point, in here, you're going to want to take out the, the glass, you're going to want to remove the glass from the metal frame, all right? One thing I discovered, like on my third window, is that I would clean all of this frame first and sort of ignore this window for a while, and then once I got everything clean, then I would start to tackle um, these panes and removing the glass from these panes. Now, when you do that, Please accept this tip from me. Buy a pair of gloves. Um, I got these on Amazon. These gloves are designed for working with knives. So supposedly, these are cut-proof gloves. I guess there's some metal fiber in here. I'm not sure how they work. Um, <clears throat> but I felt a lot more confident holding onto the edge of glass when I was wearing gloves like this. Um, I told my dear wife to use these gloves and she thought I was silly she cut her finger okay not terrible but she cut her finger when she was washing the window in the sink so these are great pick up a pair of these they're really cheap I think they were like eight bucks maybe uh, on Amazon and um, yeah I use those when I was handling the glass cleaning the glass um, speaking of cleaning um, I have a roll of these these extra thick garage towels or a shop cloth um, are also handy just to wipe things off like when you've done the WD-40 you're going to want to wipe it off with that and um, I needed reading glasses when I was working on the fine details you may not but I needed to have these on and uh, I did mention um, VintageTrailerGaskets.com it's the only place that I found that has all the seals that I needed now be prepared for um, this process of finding the right seals to be a complete headache um, this is the seal that goes along the top um, that was pretty straightforward um, because you're not wrapping this around any window okay it's just the seal that goes along the top um, to keep the rain going down the camper not inside of your camper but the seals that actually wrap around the window those those have been um, a pain in, in, num in a number of ways and the reason one of the reasons was is because I discovered that my camper had three different thicknesses of window so obviously the windows have been replaced from time to time over the years so the original glass and I've got a few panes of that um, in fact some of the windows that's all they have is the original glass because you can actually see the um, the HEHR emblem um, logo right on the glass. Now those are actually one-eighth of an inch thick, truly one-eighth of an inch. Um, I've been told as I worked with vintage trailer gaskets that anymore they don't actually make, somebody might correct me, they don't actually make one-eighth inch thick glass. It's just slightly, ever so slightly thinner than that. So when that happens you end up needing different levels of thickness. And So I've ended up in my box here, I've got three different levels of thickness for these. Um, again, I forgot that word again. Oh well. Um, but anyway, I've got gla I've got I've got I've got glazing. Thank you, glazing that is uh, made for true made for like true one eighth inch glass. Um, what they say is one inch glass, and also I have three thirty second inch. 
um, glazing for my 332nd inch glass. So uh, until I realized that there were different thicknesses, because they're also very close, you know, um, that's my treat. Because sometimes the seal just wouldn't fit. And so in some seals, just working with vintage trailer gaskets, again, great people. Um, they told me to stretch the seal at some point um, for some of the windows to give it a little, you know, make it slightly, ever so slightly thinner so it can actually fit around the window. But, um, yeah, anyway, be prepared for a bit of a headache, but it can be done. Just um, if you have the means to measure the thickness of your window, um, do that right up front. Get yourself one of those tools. Again, when I'm recording a video, I can't think of words. Um, so I'll put that on the screen too. Get one of those in the picture. There you go. Um, a few other things that you might want. Um, so when I did wrap, so what I do, and I'll probably show a video of this to you, but I would take my glazing and I would wrap it all the way around the window, okay? And one piece, I found that that's what I like. It's easier to work with. It doesn't seem like it at the beginning, but I would wrap that glazing all the way around the window. And then where it meets, um, I would clip it onto the window with these little tiny paper clips. All right, I recommend that. This makes the job just a little bit easier. And so I've got just a whole handful of those. All right, get yourself a handful of those little clips. And I also, at least in a couple of the windows, I used this vinyl glue that you would use to repair like a pool toy with and you can actually glue the ends of the vinyl glazing together and keep them in place. I'm not sure that's 100% necessary, but if you really want to be a go-getter and do a professional job, that's something to consider. Um, when I put the windows back together, um, I used a little bit of permalock, all right? It's this blue, it doesn't make a permanent bond but it makes it so the screws don't rattle out. And I'm not sure that that actually happens, but I thought, hey, as long as I have the windows out, why not use a little bit of that blue um, permalock by JB Weld. And um, I did show a little bit of that silicone sealant to you earlier and that little mistake I made, but this is what I, I bought this from Vintage Shredder Gaskets. I'm not, this is not an advertisement for them. <laughs> Just a great place to work with. Um, but I'm using this to seal all the edges. Um, so just to any place that metal comes together, I'm putting some silicone caulk there. Again, I don't know if it's absolutely 100% essential, but why not, right? Cheap. And um, so, you know, when you wrap the window around, um, you're going to need a pair of scissors, and I'll show you this in a later, in a little video snippet that I'll put right here. Um, you just want to clip the edge where the seal goes around the corner. Pretty cool. And of course, it's good to have a razor blade. Um, that's also good for cutting the, the seals. And I used a little bit of super glue, all right? So when I slid the seal in on my windows, I didn't want it to slide out, and I didn't want to crimp it again, so somebody later on, maybe me, has to use my, you know, that rotary tool to get the seal back out. So I'm just putting a little dab, not a ton, just a dab of super glue, uh, just to keep those seals in place. Um, you could also use the caulk if you want. I use that on one of the windows too. I use both. Um, yeah, my other two tools that, you know, don't get after me. I'm not responsible for any breakage. I've broken three windows, by the way. Not with these, but there's times where it was hard to get the edge on some of these windows with the seal in place um, because like I told you already the thickness of the windows and the thickness of the glazing that what I did is I would put this just like that okay a little block of wood I just kind of tapped to get that metal bracing to go over the seal and over the window and one last thing is I just had a cutting board all right so um, when I was cutting the, the glazing, gl cutting the seals, I would cut it on a cutting board. That's probably something you would think of on your own. But those are the tools I used. Um, if you have 
tools that you prefer, let me know in the comments. Yeah, so I hope this video was helpful to you. I'm no expert, but again, I was looking for a video on YouTube to help me do the Jalousie windows. I couldn't find any. Um, so I hope this is helpful to you. If nothing else, at least you can start your window with the right tools and you don't have to experiment uh, for two or three windows. But um, I'm glad I know what I know now to tackle the last two windows for my Trillium. All right, happy scrubbing, happy cleaning, happy glazing, happy restoring of your Jalousie windows. Thanks.